y'all, I've been home from school for like an hour and I still haven't taken my shoes off. What's wrong with me? Much better. Hello there, crafters, and welcome to part two of the Ugly Christmas Sweater Crochet Along. So today we are going to be working on a torso. And by torso, I mean last week, you worked on this section, which is the hem that I kept calling the waistband in that video for whatever reason. And today we are going to start working up the body of the sweater. So we're going to work pretty much to the underarm level. So like right here, this is as far up as we're working. And next week we'll tackle this top spot. But this is the part of the project where you get to go crazy with texture and color and ugly and festive and just awesomeness. So the basic idea of the part today is we're going to be working in the round, just going around this hem that we've created, but we're going to throw in a bunch of texture. You can throw in as many color changes. Again, you can change color at any point that you want to in this project, but I'm going to show you the textures that I included in my version of the sweater. I'll also give you some tips as far as sizing, you know, if you've got a little extra belly or for the ladies who need a little more room in the bust, I'll talk about that, how to size that. But I'm gonna show you four specific textures in this project and I'm gonna show you how to work them in the round, some troubleshooting tips. So the four textures I'm going to be incorporating into the sweater I make and I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot are the griddle stitch, a granny square stitch in the round, a shell stitch, and then a nice moss stitch with the color change up top. Feel free though, once you watch the video and kind of get the hang of how I'm incorporating these textures and working them in the round, Absolutely feel free to try your own textures. Just a couple ideas. You could try cables. You could try a basket weave pattern. You can go for a braided look. That's been a big thing where you make these extra loops and you braid them together. That, that would be a pretty cool touch. If you don't like the textures that I show, but you're having a hard time thinking of, you know, what other textures can I do? I would definitely recommend getting a little book of some sort like this. I got this at Walmart. Actually, I got it for Christmas, but I know it came from Walmart. And it just has different stitches and textures in there. There's always Pinterest, which is a great place to find crochet stuff. So totally feel free to play around with which texture you use and the order. And as always, you know, you can change up color like crazy. But we're gonna jump right in and I'm gonna show you the textures and patterns that I'm going to be using to work up the torso of our sweater. So here is the hem that we worked on last time. And I've just inserted my hook into the loop from last time. This is starting a new row. We did a join here. That's where we ended. So the first texture I'm going to incorporate is the griddle stitch. The griddle stitch is really nice because it's pretty simple. It's a pattern where we alternate double crochet and single crochet stitches. So the first row we work double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, all the way around. And then on the next row, we work a double crochet in every single crochet and vice versa. I'm going to start my griddle stitch with the double crochet. So I'm gonna start by chaining two as a turning chain. And as I mentioned in last week's video, I like to do the turning chain just because it fills in that gap when we do the join. I've got my turning chain and I'm going to work a double crochet in this very same spot where we worked our join from our last round. So I'm just going to work a double crochet in that spot right there. In the next stitch, I'm going to work a single crochet. Next stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet. And then a single crochet and then a double crochet and can you guess what comes next yes a single crochet so i'm going to just keep repeating this process where i do double crochet single crochet just alternating them back and forth and i'm going to work all the way around so you're not going to see me work this whole thing because that'd be really boring to watch me go all the way around but i'm going to work alternating double crochet and single crochet all the way around until I get to about here. And then I'll talk about some things that could happen and I'll talk about how to join it. So here we go. I have worked most of the way around using the griddle stitch, just alternating back and forth between single crochet and double crochet and I'm almost to the end. Now remember, on my first stitch here when I started, I started with a double crochet. So let me finish this row and I'll show you what happens here. And this may happen to you. So I just did a double crochet, so I'm going to do a single crochet double crochet, single crochet, and last stitch, double crochet. 
Now remember, what I told you about this project, we don't really worry about counting stitches, so that's kind of a nice thing. But because we're not counting stitches, we don't know until we work around the first time whether we have an even or odd number of stitches. So if we have an even number, then I'm going to end on a single crochet, and then I'll have a single crochet, double crochet, and it'll be super nice joined together. However, I'm in the position where I have a double crochet ending and a double crochet starting. So you have a couple options. First option, which is what I'm going to go with, is I'm just going to have two double crochet beside each other. So you could totally choose to end up with, you know, two of the same stitch beside each other. That just means that every round when I get to the end, I'll, you know, whatever stitch I start with, I'll end with that. So here I'll end up with two double crochet beside each other. The next row I'll end up with two single crochet beside each other and so on. And if you're okay with that, which I am and I think it looks fine, then you can always stick with that. Another option would be to either do an increase or a decrease. So you could do an increase here and also work, say, a single crochet in this same spot. And we've added a stitch, but hey, it's an ugly Christmas sweater, not a big deal. And then we'd be in back to that alternating pattern once we do the join. Or you can decrease or just skip a spot here and join like that. I'm personally not a fan of the decrease because even if you do the invisible decrease, you're still gonna get more gapping in the join and I just am not a fan of gapping in joins. So I'm just going to leave it where I have two of the same stitches beside each other and not worry about it because, hey, it's an ugly Christmas sweater, right? So once you've assessed your situation, decided which way you want to go, it's time to join. So as I mentioned last week, all my joins are going to be worked by inserting the top of the first stitch from the round and just working a slip stitch. And that's all I'm going to do for joining. So now it's time to start working the second round of my griddle stitch. My first stitch is going to be worked in this first stitch here from the previous row, which is a double crochet. Now to do the griddle stitch, we always put the opposite stitch in the stitch below, meaning if we're going to be working in a double crochet, we work a single crochet. If we're working in a single crochet, we do a double crochet. So this is a double crochet that is my first stitch that I'm going to be working in. So I'm going to crochet a single crochet. So this time I'm going to chain one and in the same spot where we joined in the top of that double crochet, work a single crochet. My next stitch, it's a single crochet. So I will work a double crochet. Next stitch is a double crochet that I'm working in. So I will do a single crochet. And I'll just keep repeating this. And you might notice that, you know, the first round, it's a little bit up and down, but once we do a few more rounds of these, it will kind of interlock. And so it ends up being a pretty smooth edge when it's all said and done. So I'm just going to keep working this pattern around and just making sure that if I have a double crochet stitch I'm working in, that I work a single crochet. If I'm working in a single crochet stitch, I work a double crochet. And I'm going to keep working this around. And again, be careful when you get towards the end, just remember how you decided to do it and just be consistent. And this is how we work the griddle stitch. All right, here's what my sweater is looking like so far. I've done several more rows of the griddle stitch and I've come up as far as I want to with this stitch. Now, one last thing I want to mention before I finish talking about the griddle stitch is I want to mention that if you find yourself in a row ending with a single crochet and say it started with a single crochet, to join the round, you still just join in the top of the first stitch of the round. So even though we have, you know, just one turning chain here instead of two for the double crochet, we don't do anything different because this is a single crochet. The only thing we do is just come in the top and work our slip stitch to join. Now what I like to do between my chunks of texture is to work just a row or two of double crochet and I find that this just helps with the structure of the sweater and so that way if I do get really crazy wonky with my sizing in a particular pattern that doing the double crochet just kind of evens everything out. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to chain two and work a double crochet right in this spot where I worked my join and I'm going to work a double crochet in each stitch going around, so just working evenly. That's the nice thing with the griddle stitch, is it's really easy to work the row of double crochet after it, because you just work in the top of your stitch, whether it's a single crochet or double crochet in the row below, doesn't really matter. I'm just working double crochet around. So I'm going to do two rows of this, and then I'll introduce our next texture. 
I finished doing two rows of double crochet just evenly around and now I'm going to introduce the next texture which is going to be our granny square stitch. Now it's not actually going to be worked as a square but it's going to have that look like in a granny square where you have the clusters of say three double crochet and then a bit of chain between them and where they kind of work in the chain spaces and where it has a very open texture. So let me show you what it's going to look like. This is what it looks like on my completed sweater. And I'm gonna just talk about a couple quick things with this. First of all, because it's such an open texture, there's a lot of stretch both width-wise and length-wise. So sometimes when I wear it, um, if I'm a little more full that day, it'll kind of stretch this way. Whereas if you know I'm adjusting the bottom of the sweater, it might pull this way more. So this stitch, I personally really like it because First of all, it uses a little bit less yarns because you have these lots of gaps there. You don't have to work stitches, so it works up a little faster. Secondly, I think it also adds kind of to the tacky element of the sweater, just because, I mean, I probably wouldn't make a sweater with this big holes, or if I did make a lacy sweater with this big holes, I'd probably do something different than just a little, you know, cluster of double crochet. But I think it's a really cute and just funky way to add some of the tacky and ugly to the ugly Christmas sweater. And there's one last thing that I'll mention. If you are adverse to the idea of ugly in your ugly Christmas sweater, you may want to avoid this stitch because, because it will drastically change where our seam is. So on this sweater, my seam's pretty visible in here because I wasn't doing, I was kind of going back and forth on this um, with how I was doing my joints. So that's why there's a pretty obvious seam here, but the seam runs along right here. But the way I work the sweater is I made the sleeves start underneath a seam here. So the sleeve is right here, but if we come down the side of our sweater, well, the seam is way over here, down at this bottom section. So just because of how this has worked, it definitely will move your seam to the left or right a lot. Okay, so a couple options if you want to avoid having the seam moving all over the place. First of all, let's just not do the granny square pattern and to do a different pattern, maybe make your griddle stitch section thicker. That's totally okay. Another option is once you're done with the granny square round to detach your yarn and reattach it so that you can realign your seams on this side of the granny square to line up with the seam on this side. So those are just a few thoughts to keep in mind before we start into this, but now let's actually talk about how to do this. With the granny square, my basic pattern is going to be three double crochet, three chain, and then I'll skip three double crochet down here and work in the next three double crochet repeating this. So let's see how this actually looks. I'm going to start by chaining two. This is going to be my turning chain. I don't count this as a stitch. I'm going to work a double crochet right in the same spot as my join. And after this double crochet, I'm going to work one in the next spot and a third one in the following spot. Next thing I want to do is work three chain. Now I tend to do my chain pretty tightly, so if you have a, a similar problem, just kind of keep in mind how tight you're going to be making it because you don't want it to suddenly shrink the width of your sweater because then it might be hard to get on and off. So just keep tension in mind as you work this. Okay, once I do my three chain, I'm going to come back along here and I'm gonna skip the next three double crochet. So skip this one, skip this one, and skip this one. That brings me to this stitch right here and I'm going to work a double crochet into that fourth stitch. And then work two more double crochet. You can already see how we're starting to get the granny square holes in there. Again, chain three. Skip my next three stitches, boom, 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 and work three double crochet in the three following stitches. So one, and two, and three. So I'm going to work this going all the way around, but I'm gonna give you a fair warning. When you get towards this side, it's probably not gonna look quite the way you're hoping it will, but I'm gonna work to about here and I'll explain what we're going to do in this section. All right, so I have worked my pattern around, but here is the situation that I find myself in and you will likely find yourself in a similar situation. If I continue the pattern, what I would do next is I would chain three, then I would skip these next three stitches 
and then in the following three stitches I would work double crochet. So I'd end up working double crochet in these three stitches right here. However, as you can see, that would put it right next to this block. So the reason this happens is because the granny square pattern that I'm showing, it uses a multiple of six, so three for the double crochet and three for the chain. However, we haven't been bothering to count our stitches because nobody's got time for that. So you may get lucky and you may happen to have a multiple of six stitches when you worked around, but in all likelihood, it's probably not going to work out perfectly. So you have a couple of options. What I like to do, what I find gives the most consistent look is to not cut down on the number of stitches I do in any cluster meaning I'm not going to say just do two chain and then a cluster of just two and then two chain I find that that makes a very obvious section in this part of the pattern that okay something wasn't right there which is a totally fine option if you want to go that route um, and if you're going for the more tacky end you know the more quote mistakes that you can throw in there the better but for me I just wasn't really happy with how that was turning out so what I'm going to do and what you may need to do is I'm going to compensate and the way I'm going to do this is by working some of my double crochet um, working some of them in the same stitches as each other and not skipping as many stitches so I'm actually going to undo these two stitches here and I'm still going to create a cluster here where I work three double crochet but I'm going to work the first two in the same stitch so one two I've got two in that stitch there and then my third one for this cluster I'm going to work in the following stitch okay now it's time for my chain again I'm not going to drop the number of chains I do I'm still going to chain three so one two and three but this time I'm gonna look. Let's say I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. And so I still need to have my skip, a cluster of three, and then skip. So what I'm going to do is instead of skipping three stitches, I'm going to skip just two. And then I'll drop down a double crochet. And let's see, so I have one, two, three, four stitches left. So I'm going to finish this cluster like normal, where I work one double crochet in each spot until I have a total of three. And then yes, I do have only two here in this space instead of three like normal, but it's going to work out okay. And I'm just going to chain three. And now I'm ready to join. So that's all I did. I just kind of adjusted, you know, by working two stitches in the same spot, skipping one less space here, skipping one less space here, and just kind of compensating. But I'm still doing clusters of three, chains of three, clusters of three, chains of three. Once I get that far, I'm going to join the same way we've been joining, right in the top of our first stitch from the round. Again, just insert my hook and work a slip stitch. And this is where you're going to find that the seam's going to move because I want to get myself to this spot here, so I'm just going to slip stitch in the next two double crochet. And in that one right there, work the slip stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch directly into this big hole. So I'm just going to insert my hook through there, yarn over, and pull that loop through. So this kind of brings me where I'm in this spot, and I'm going to now work my cluster of three. I'm going to start by chaining two. Now because our join is going to be with this chain and not with a stitch right beside it, you can either count your turning chain as a stitch, or you can not count it as a stitch and still work three more double crochet. I'm going to work three more double crochet. So these initial blocks, as you can see with this one, they will look a little bit wider than say a block like this, but that's the look I'm going for. So that's how I'm going to do that. Or of course you could definitely leave your turning chain acting as your first stitch. So whichever you go with, work the appropriate number of double crochet into space, and then it's time to just work our pattern all the way around. So chain three, skip our cluster, and we're going to work our double crochet into this big loop here. So I've got my yarn over, insert my hook through here, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Work that double crochet just like normal. Of course, I'm going to work a total of three in this spot, so I have my cluster of three double crochet. And then chain three, one, two, three skip my next cluster of double crochet and work in the following big chain spot just work three more double crochet 
and I'm going to repeat this process all the way around and it's going to be joined the same way I joined it on this previous round and I'll start the round the same way I started this round. So I'm going to work several more rows of this granny square stitch and then I'll talk about how to do the double crochet row so just kind of even it out and then we'll jump into our next pattern. Alright, so I finished going around with my granny square pattern. Here's what we've got so far. It might look like this top is narrower, but that's just because of the camera angle. Um, but what I will go ahead and mention at this point, and of course I would recommend doing this at several times throughout, is make sure you keep trying on your sweater as you work along. Um, you may find that, okay, it's a little snug on my belly, and you may decide that you need to do some increases. So if you find you need to make your sweater larger at any point, we're just gonna do some simple increases. An easy way to do it with this pattern would be to start working blocks of four and maybe change of three or maybe even increase the chains also. And that'll add a few more stitches going around. We'll give it a little more stretch to fit around any areas that might be a little larger. So I'm going to do two more rounds on this project and then I'm actually gonna show you where we're at so far. As usual, I'm going to work two rows of double crochet between my different patterns. So to work my double crochet evenly around, like normal, I'm going to chain two as my turning chain, and I'm not gonna count that as a stitch. And I'm gonna work my first double crochet right in here. And then I'm going to double crochet evenly across this cluster. So work a second one there, and then a third one in that third stitch. And then when I get to these chain three spaces, I'm just going to work three double crochet into that space. Two and three. Now I'm at these normal double crochet spaces, so I will work a double crochet in each one of them. So I'll work a total of three across the top of this block. And then once I get to the next chain three space, I will work three double crochet in that space right here. So it's kind of like working the granny square pattern, except you're also working double crochet in the double crochet blocks. And so as I keep working this around, I will get a nice basic row of double crochet. And this will just kind of break up the pattern. So I'm gonna work this around, join just like I normally do, where I slip stitch in the top of that first stitch, and then I'm actually going to do a color change. I'll show you how I do the color change so that way I don't have any extra tails to weave in. And then once I do the color change, I'm gonna have my model come back in here and I'll show you where it's at and talk about a couple things to consider as we keep working up the torso. So now that I've worked my first row of just plain double crochet around, I'm ready to join this row together. So because I'm working a color change here, I'll show you a really simple way to work this color change. I'm going to complete my last stitch here, and I'm going to work the join in my new color. What I want to do is in my new color, I want to make a slip knot, and I'm gonna set it there for just a moment. And what's, I'm gonna leave this loop on my hook and insert my hook in the top of that first double crochet where I want to work the join. Now normally to work the join, I would yarn over and pull through in a slip stitch. Instead what we're going to do is we're gonna put the slip knot onto here and tighten that down. And I'm gonna pull the slip knot through that first stitch and our loop right here. And then working with my new yarn, I'm going to chain two. Now after I do the chain, or you could do it before you do the chain, I'm going to deal with my ends here. First of all, I'm going to cut my red color here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail. And I'm going to look from the front, and you may notice that if I pull on this, that this can get really loose. So I'm gonna take this red tail and adjust it down so that way there's the right amount of tension to fill in that gap. And then I'm gonna take this red tail and tie it with my green tail. Just knot those together, probably knot them twice, just so they hold pretty well and the red doesn't stretch at all. And now that is fastened off and I'm going to work over these two tails. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to again in my green, just work evenly with double crochet going around. I'm gonna work a double crochet in the same spot where I worked the join. Just I'm gonna make sure that I work over those two tails there. Work my double crochet, 
come to my next stitch. Again, just kind of hold those tails down there, work right over them, work another double crochet, and just keep working evenly down my row if, with the green and working these double crochet. And by working over the tails, that means I won't have to come back later on and weave them in. And I'm really not a fan of weaving in my ends, so I always look for little ways to make life a little bit easier. So I'm going to keep working double crochet evenly around and then I will join just like I've been doing this whole time. And then we're gonna pause to try it on the model and I'll talk about a couple sizing things. So as I said, we are going to now have our model try on the sweater, what we've got so far. I'm just bending over so you can see my face, okay? You're short enough shrimp. Okay, let's go ahead and put this hey, on. I'm almost as tall as you. <laughs> Do you wanna go over your head? Sure. <laughs> And I would definitely recommend trying this on several times in the process of making it just so you can make sure that it's fitting the way you want it to and also to check for any areas where you might be a little larger if you need to adjust it or anything like that. Is that how you really put shirts on? You just like stand Another big reason why I'm having her try it on at this stage after working the first two patterns is because we're starting to reach the point right here where we're going to need to work on making the top part. So if I can have you turn we're gonna work basically to about this part on a shirt. So if you have a shirt on that fits comfortably, we're working to that line where the sleeve is attached, okay? And that's where we'll stop doing our patterns. So because I'm going to fit in two more patterns here, I need to kind of think to myself, okay, well, if I want the sweater, you know, longer, I will need to do more rows. If I want it shorter, I need to not do too many because if you're not careful, you'll end up with like a crazy long sweater, which, you know, that would actually be a really cool idea. Make it extra tacky, you know, ugly Christmas sweater. Yeah, so you maybe, so that would look good like, however long you want it. So I, I want it to be like a, Remember, this part here is pretty stretchy, too. Another thing I'll mention is also just be aware of where your color changes and things are. So I'm going to do a color change. After we work the shells here, I'm going to do a color change up here. So just kind of think about, ladies, especially, you know, with the bust, just kind of think about where it makes sense for that color change to fall. Also, if you find that you need a little extra stretch in the bust, as we work our patterns, I pick a front and a back of your project. And then whenever you're on the side, so you're like halfway around, on either side, work some extra stitches. And that increase will let you shape it better for your bust um, if you need to go larger there. But I think overall, we're off to a good start. Play around with it. If you go too long, you can unravel it. If you want it long, you just work a few more rows. But I'm gonna, this is probably the last time I'll have her try it on until I'm done with the torso. I'll show you at the end of the video how far we get. But just make sure that as you keep working on this process that you regularly try it on to make sure that your progress is matching what you want it to look like. Now it's time for us to work our shell pattern. The really nice thing about this is our shell pattern calls for a multiple of six stitches. And guess what, our granny square pattern we created a multiple of six stitches going around. So this pattern is going to fit really nicely and we shouldn't need to make any adjustments when we get to the end. Now, if you decide to change the width at any point and do some increases, it will you know, throw off whether you are at a multiple of six stitches or not, and you'll need to make adjustments kind of like we did with the granny square round, but otherwise you should be good to go and it should work out really nicely. So our shell pattern is going to start with a chain one as like our turning chain, and we're gonna work a single crochet right in this first stitch here. So in the same spot where we worked our join. I'm going to skip the next two stitches, so skip that one and that one, and I'm going to work five double crochet all in the same spot here. So work my first double crochet, my second double crochet, all in the same spot here. My third in that same stitch, my fourth, and last of all, my fifth stitch all work in that same exact spot. So I have one, two, three, four, five double crochet in that one stitch. Now I'm going to skip the next two stitches. So skip this one here, skip this one. And in this third one, I'm going to work a single crochet. And that's my nice basic shell. So again, I'm going to skip two stitches, so skip that one, skip that one, and then in my following stitch, work a total of five double crochet, all in that same spot. So one, two, three, 
four, and five double crochet all together. And then I'm going to skip two stitches, so skip that one, skip that one, and work a single crochet in that third spot. And this is going to give me that nice shell pattern. I'm going to work this all the way around, and then I'll show you the join, and I'll show you how to start the next row. So I've worked this project around, and I worked my last cluster of five for that last shell. And what I would normally do next is a single crochet, but guess what? My first stitch from this round is a single crochet. So I'm just going to slip stitch in the top of that single crochet stitch from the beginning of the round. And that's going to fasten it together, and that will finish my shell. Now to start the next round, I need to get to this third double crochet, that one that's in the middle. So I'm going to work a slip stitch in the first double crochet, slip stitch in the second double crochet, and a slip stitch in the third middle top double crochet of my shell. Now I'm going to chain one and work a single crochet right in that same spot. So just like that. And now when I work my five double crochet, that shell cluster, when I skip my two, it's gonna bring me right to that single crochet. So you're gonna always work your five double crochet, that cluster to create the shell. From now on, you will always work it in the single crochet on the previous round. So I'm gonna work five in here. And then I'm going to work my single crochet if you look at this right here, I'm going to count one, two, work in this third one. So right in the top of this third stitch, that middle double crochet in my shell cluster. So work a single crochet in the top right there. And then I'm just going to keep repeating this around where I have my five clusters creating the shell nestled into the single crochet. And then I work those single crochet at the peak of each shell. So I'm gonna work this around several times. Just keep repeating this process. I'm gonna start and end my rows the same way. And then I'm gonna show you a special row to do after this that will really look pretty and will make our edge even again. Because right now we're going to be creating an edge that, as you can see, it goes up and down. So I'll show you how to work through that after I do a few more rows of this. All right, as you can see, the sweater is really coming together. I'm going to show you one more pattern that I'm going to incorporate into the overall design of the sweater, but I'm also going to show you a little trick for after you finish the row of shells, and it looks really pretty, and I personally like to change color here. Again, as I mentioned a couple times throughout this crochet along, you can absolutely change colors whenever you want, and you know, more color changes, less color changes, go as crazy or as simple as you want. I personally, though, really like doing a color change after the shells because it creates this really pretty design. So I'm going to show you that, and then we'll get into our last pattern. So if we look at what I've done, I've just finished a round of the shells pattern and I've already done the join. Now because I'm going to change color, I'm going to undo this join and I'm going to join and do the color change all at once. I personally really like doing my color changes and joins like this because it means I don't have as many tails and I think it just looks really smooth. So what I did earlier when I changed to the green and what I'm going to do now to change to white is I'm going to make a slip knot with my new color going to insert my hook through that single crochet through the top of it where I would normally work my slip stitch. I'm going to put this loop on the hook, tighten it down, and then pull this slip knot through. Okay? And then my green, my other color, I'm going to snug it up just a little bit there, cut the tail end. I'm going to tie this tail of the old with the tail of my new probably tie it twice just to keep it nice and secure and now I'm ready to work in the white so because I'm working in this single crochet spot I'm going to work a double crochet here so I'm going to start by chaining two as my turning chain and then I'm going to work a double crochet in this same single crochet spot and again I'm going to work over my tails Now the goal of this next row that I'm doing, what I'm trying to accomplish, is I'm trying to get this to have a flat edge even though these shells have a bump. So I'm going to change up what kind of stitches I do. So in my single crochet, I'm going to do a double crochet. 
And then I'm going to do a double crochet also in the following stitch. So come right there. Again, I'm still working over the tails. Work a double crochet. But then in my next stitch, I'm going to work a half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Then in my next spot, which is the very top, that third one in my shell pattern, I'm just going to work a single crochet. And then I'm going to reverse that pattern going back down the other side. So next I'm going to do a half double crochet. And then in the next stitch, a double crochet. Okay, so I'll show you that all again. In a single crochet, I always work a double crochet. And then the pattern going across these five stitches of the shell, it's going to be double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, half double crochet, and then a double crochet. A lot of words, lots of halves and doubles and singles, but that's okay, let's work through it again. So I'm going to work a double crochet in this first spot. And then in the next one, a half double crochet. In the next stitch, I'm going to work a single crochet. And then a half double crochet to start going back down the other side. And then a double crochet. Now I'm back to a single crochet stitch in that previous row, so again, work a double crochet there. Then we're gonna work up this next shell, so work a double crochet in the first stitch, followed by a half double crochet in the second stitch of the shell pattern, and then a single crochet in that top one, and then back down with a half double crochet, and then finish it off with a double crochet. So this is what I'm going to do for two reasons. One, it creates a flat edge on the top, so it just is really nice for getting back to working on my next design. And secondly, I think it looks really pretty having these longer stitches. Here's what it looks like in the sweater that I finished, just kind of this nice wave pattern along there, and I personally think it's really pretty. So this is how I'm going to do the row immediately after my shell patterns. And then this is going to count as like my first row of double crochet. As I've mentioned several times, I do a row, I do two rows of double crochet between each pattern change, two rows right there. So I'm gonna count this as my first row between pattern changes, and then I'll work a second row where I work just double crochet. All right, so I finished going around and I'm counting these two rows as my two rows of double crochet in between each pattern. So now that means it's time for our fourth and final pattern. And what I'm going to be showing today is the moss stitch. Now what's cool about this is I'm going to incorporate a lot of color changes. And because of the color changes, there are so many awesome ways you can get this to look. On the already finished sweater, I did a moss stitch here and I just used two colors alternating each row. And that creates these cool kind of up and down stripes. But I'm going to actually be using three colors on this one. So it's gonna create lots of different patterns. And changing the order that you swap out your colors will change the way the pattern ends up looking. So you can totally play around with this. A great idea would be to do a quick like Pinterest or Google search of the moss stitch, just to kind of get an idea of how changing up the color order will change up how the pattern looks. But regardless of what colors you choose to go with, it's all crocheted the same way. So let me teach you how to to do this stitch. I'm going to start by chaining one and then in the same spot where I work the join I'm going to work a single crochet. The way this pattern works is we do single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain, and so forth. But when we do a chain we're going to skip a spot. So what I mean is we're going to chain, skip a spot, single crochet, chain, skip a spot, single crochet. So we've got our single crochet here, here, and here. We've got a chain there and a chain there. So chain, skip a spot, single crochet. Chain, skip a spot, single crochet. Chain, skip a spot, single crochet. Not too bad. I'm gonna finish working this around then I'll show you how to join it and then I'll show you the color change and how to work the next round. All right, I've nearly finished working this row around. What I've done is I, I did my single crochet chain pattern all the way around. The last things I've done here 
is I worked a single crochet, then I chained and skipped the spot, and now I'm back at the beginning. Now, I am going to change color for my next row. However, with this particular pattern, the moss stitch, I would recommend not doing the color chain and the join in the same place. So I'm going to join here by just working a slip stitch in the top of this single crochet from the beginning of the round, like so. And then I'm going to pull another loop through, pull it big, cut it, and fasten off. Okay, so this is my first row. I'm gonna get my next color. I'm going to red. And in my new color, I'm going to make a slip knot and put it on my hook. And I'm gonna come to this chain spot just before this tail here. And I'm going to work a single crochet in this spot. So to do that, I've got this loop on my hook. I'm gonna insert my hook there, yarn over with my new color, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through both loops. So now I've attached my new color. So now I'm gonna work my pattern around. I'm going to chain, and my next stitch is going to work in this chain space. So you always skip the single crochet and work your next stitch in the chain space. So I'm going to work over these tails just to hide them in here a little bit and work a single crochet in this chain space. And then I'm going to chain skip the following single crochet and work a single crochet in the chain space. And as you can see, I'm working over my tails here so that way I won't have to weave them back in later. So as you can see, this kind of nestles the stitches beside each other and so you get these really cool designs. So again, just chain, work a single crochet in my slip stitch space. So always skip the single crochet and work in the chain spaces. And I'm just going to repeat this process around. And this is the last thing you need to know for working the torso. I'm going to repeat this process where I'll change colors and keep working the moss stitch around um, for a few more rows. And then once I'm getting close to hitting where the bottoms of the sleeves will be, I'm going to work just a row or two of double crochet in my, probably in my white, just in one color to kind of finish it off and give it a nice look on top. And then next week we will talk about how to shape the neck hole and the sleeve holes. So let me finish this up and then I'll show you what I've got so far. All right, so here we go. I finished up with our four different patterns. We started with the griddle stitch, then the granny square, then the shells, the last of all the moss stitch to finish it off. I did just a basic row of double crochet going all the way around the top. And now it's time for her to try it on and we'll see if she's happy with it or if she wants me to make it even longer. Then if she likes the length, we'll be done for this week. And next week I'll show you how to shape the top with the neck hole and the armholes. So you ready to try this on? Alrighty. Do you like that length? So when you're trying this on, you want to bring it right under your armpit because that's where we're going to attach the sleeve. So that's where you want to measure from when you're measuring this front piece, just under this armpit section here. So this is what we worked on this week. This is the torso of the ugly Christmas sweater crochet along. Next week we're going to shape this part up here and it's going to kind of look like the way her top already is here where we're going to come up and have the bands and leave a neck hole. And then the following week, which will be the fourth and final installment of the Ugly Christmas Sweater Crochet Along, I'll teach you how to crochet and attach the arms. And then your Ugly Christmas Sweater will be done. So I'm super excited to see what you guys create. I know I've had a lot of fun working on this project. Make sure that you check out Crafters Autonomous on Facebook and go to the Facebook page and there's a post that's pinned to the top. And that's specifically for you to share your progress as you crochet along. And you can see the ideas that other people are doing Doing, and we can all get inspired and work on this project together. So I'm super excited. You excited for it? Oh yeah. All right, so she'll have to wait another week, but then we'll get it a little bit more of it put together. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy crafting. Hey peeps, thanks so much for watching. I have a fun little question for you. So I'm gonna ask Bet Pie and then I wanna hear your answer to the comments down in the comments below. So my question for Bet Pie is, if you had to pick a favorite Christmas song, what would you pick? Or like, what's the Christmas song you're constantly listening to right now? I listen to like, Mannheim Steamroller. I like God Rest Your Merry Gentleman, that one's good. Yeah, that one's cool. Um, okay, so 
that's one of that's what she's listening to right now comment below what Christmas music is your favorite or at least what you find that you keep listening to over and over all right we're out of here